uh, welcome back. Uh, in this lecture, we will continue the analysis of 1 D wave equation. Let me recall what we did uh, last time. So, we are discussing the initial value problem or Cauchy problem for the one dimensional wave equation. Okay, let me write it <coughs> UTT minus C square UXX equal to 0. So, it is homogeneous wave equation. So, right hand side is 0. So, this C is for x in the real line and t positive. And we are prescribing uh, initial conditions at t equal to 0. So, namely u x 0 equal to u 0 x and u t the first derivative of u with respect to t at t equal to 0 is equal to u 1 x. So, here u 0 and u 1 are arbitrary given functions u 0 is a C 2 function and u 1 is a C 1 function and the solution is given by the D'Alembert's formula. Recall this. So, we derived this in the previous class. So, the solution is given by this D'Alembert's formula. So, let me write it once again equal to half u 0 x plus c t plus u 0 x minus c t plus 1 by 2 c integral x minus c t to x plus c t u 1 eta d eta. So, this is Delambert's formula. <coughs> And so, just to derive this uh, <coughs> previous time. So, it is not necessary that, so this is again x is in R. So, we are providing the <coughs> initial conditions at t equal to 0. So, let me denote this by 1 and this D'Alembert's formula. So, you just remember this D'Alembert's formula which is uh, used repeatedly. So, it is not necessary that we prescribe the initial conditions at t equal to 0. So, we can prescribe them uh, on any line t equal to t 0. So, let me write it uh, <coughs> the another problem. So, this is, so let me write it again it is homogeneous wave equation. So, let me use a different function here. Equation is same, but now we are going to prescribe uh, the initial conditions at some other uh, t equal to t 0. So, this is again x is in r and now I am taking t t 0. So, previously t 0 was 0, 
but now I can take any T0 arbitrary real number so, and I prescribe the initial conditions at time t equal to 0. So, that is my initial time ok. So, I use the same u 0 The wave equation has many nice invariant properties. So, one of them is translation invariant which is easy to verify. So, if you change t to t minus t 0 the wave equation does not change and exploiting this property we can write down the solution of 3 ok the solution of 3 3 is given by a very simple to verify u of x t is equal to small u of x now just you are translating so t minus t 0 and t is bigger than quadratic, where small u is solution of the problem 1 <coughs> which is given by the D'Alembert's formula. So, this uh, capital U is also given by the D'Alembert's formula only thing is you have to change t to t minus t naught that is all ok. So, this we are going to use little later and more generally so that is just a remark. So, even for this <coughs> solution of the problem 3 is neatly given by the D'Alembert's formula with t replaced by t minus t 0 that is all there is a, a not much difference there. More generally so this is just a remark initial data can be prescribed on any non characteristic line curve non character on any non characteristic t equal to pi x, but then there will be some conditions on phi in order to show that the solution exists and certainly solution is not given in any closed form. So, this existence has to be proved uh, by using some fixed point arguments ok. So, the details you can find it in our recently published PDE book. Okay, so, the <coughs> so, we next use <coughs> uh, D'Alembert's formula <coughs> to prove a simple estimate, a simple estimate on the solution. ok. So, assume that the initial functions u 0 and u 1 assume u 0 and u 1 are bounded functions. Bounded functions
say u1 u0 x absolute value and also u1 x absolute value both are less than or equal to m for all x in r. Okay. Then you go back to the D'Alembert's <coughs> formula. So, again I just yeah equation number 2 D'Alembert's formula. So, now you take absolute value on both the sides and by our assumption this u 0 u 0 is bounded by m. So, you get 2 m here there is a half here. So, you get m and again in the integral side you take the absolute value and that is also bounded by m and then you integrate the constant you get 2 c t again you get 2 c 2 c cancels and what we get is. So, this is a very simple estimate. I just write it. Then for any t positive, so this is just direct consequence of the uh, D'Alembert's formula. Then for any t positive, we have mod of u x t this I take okay, less than or equal to m times 1 plus t for all x in r and t less than or equal to t. So, there is a t here. Okay. So, what this estimate says is at any <coughs> positive time t u is also a bounded function of x, okay. but it may not be bounded function of t as t grows. So, this right hand side also goes, but this is useful. <coughs> Generally, such estimates are useful in establishing uniqueness and uh, continuous dependence on the initial uh, data. So, in, in fact, this if you replace m by sup u 0 and sup u 1, you see that. Okay. So, if you <coughs> change u 0 and u 1 little bit, so the corresponding solution also changes. Uh, very slightly and that is continuous dependence on the initial data. Okay. So, this is <coughs> so in, in case c is not a constant then we do not have D'Alembert's formula. In that case such deriving such estimates for uh, solutions are very very useful in establishing uniqueness and continuous dependence of solutions. A more physically <coughs> relevant, so this is you can say it is sup norm. Okay, so this estimate is in sup norm because we are taking estimate in sup norm. We are taking supremum over x in R. <coughs> A more physically relevant norm is the energy norm. <coughs> so, let me briefly describe that okay. and these are very useful in studying general hyperbolic equations uh, not only second order, but even higher orders and also systems. Uh, <coughs> okay. So, this is the <coughs> This energy is the sum of 
kinetic energy and potential energy. So, this is total energy. So, this is defined by at time t ok. So, it is just half integral over minus infinity to infinity u sub t x t square plus c square u x square x t and you integrate with respect to x. Okay. So, this is <coughs> so the first term is kinetic energy and second term is the potential energy. So, sum of two energies uh, <coughs> an integration by part. So, let me just show you heuristically. So, provided this integral is finite ok. If integral is infinite uh, that does not make sense. So, uh, for the time being just assume that uh, the integral is finite. Uh, let me show you that this E t is constant that means, it does not depend on uh, t ok. So, for that what we should do we should consider its derivative with respect to t and show that that is 0. So, again formally uh, <coughs> so assume that we can take the derivative in inside the integral sign and you see that. <coughs> so, this is just nothing but minus infinity to infinity the first term gives me u t u t t. So, I differentiate the first term with respect to t. So, that 2 2 goes away. So, just you have uh, u t t ok plus the second term c square u x u x t. So, I am differentiating with respect to t. So, that is what I get. Okay, these are just heuristic arguments we make <coughs> remark at the end of this derivation. And now, this one okay, you can write it as this is equal to let me write it here d by d x of u t u x. So, if I do that one term I get is <coughs> this term and now there is another term by product rule. So, that I have to remove it what is that term that is precisely u t u x x ok. And remember we are integrating. So, this is d by d x term. So, I should just evaluate the limit of this at plus or minus infinity evaluate at x equal to plus or minus infinity. So, that and you have to take the limit and assume they are 0 ok. Assume equal to 0. So, they will not contribute anything to the integral. So, what I get is simply minus infinity to infinity. So, there is u t common here, there is u t here, there is u t here. So, u t t minus c square u x x d x. But this is since u is solution of the wave equation, homogeneous wave equation, this is just 0. So, the whole thing is 0. So, that proves E t is 
a constant. Okay, so, this is a conservative system that can be expected because the equation is derived by using Newton's second law and most of the equation derived by Newton's second law are conservative <coughs> uh, equations. So, the total energy is conserved. Okay, so, in general when in the study of general hyperbolic equations, uh, one considers such norms and tries to prove uh, existence, uniqueness and other properties. So, because there are no explicit formulas for the solution. Okay, so, that is uh, in the present case, so we have again the advantage of the D'Alembert's formula. So, from the D'Alembert's formula, so this is uh, an exercise for you. So, it is a long calculation. So, you have to do several uh, uh, <coughs> okay. express this energy energy namely this u t square x t plus c square u x square x t in terms of u 0 and u 1. Okay. So, that is uh, <coughs> in terms of the initial energy because at t equal to 0 u 0 uh, u x for example, u x will be u 0 prime and u t will be u 1. Okay. So, you, we, you can express because we have the explicit formula given by D'Alembert's formula. Okay, and verify, verify that it is a constant. But this advantage of an explicit formula is missing when the coefficients are variables or higher order equations. So, one has to deal with the uh, energy directly. Okay. So, with this remark just to move on. Okay. So, we will <coughs> uh, next discuss. So, so far we have discussed only the homogeneous wave equation and now we will discuss uh, inhomogeneous equation and surprisingly even a formula for the solution of the inhomogeneous equation can be reduced to the solution of a homogeneous equation. Okay. And this is known as Duhamel's principle, okay. an important tool not only for the wave equation, but for many evolution equations. We will see uh, even for the heat equation, this principle can be applied. Okay. Very useful tool. Okay. So, let me just describe that Duhamel's principle. So, in fact, even for first order equation, not uh, when you solve. Uh, <coughs> inhomogeneous equations, you are using Duhamel's principle in some form, okay? though you might not have noticed it, but it is hidden there. Okay? So, what is the problem? What is the problem? So, this again wave equation. So, 
So, instead of 0, now we have a forcing term. So, it is also inhomogeneous term is called forcing term. So, of course, that will certainly affect the solution. So, let us see how that. So, again x is in r. So, we are uh, and t positive and initial conditions. Okay. So, that is U one X. So let me denote it by equation four. Okay. So obviously some continuity assumptions uh, should be put on F. So let's first uh, derive the formula and then we'll see what conditions we should put on f instead of stating in the beginning itself. So, once you see the formula, we will know what condition to put on f, so that we will get again a C 2 function that is important. Okay. So, as usual this u 0 is a C 2 function and u 1 is a C 1 function. So, that is always there because u 1 when f is 0 that we need to assume. Okay. So, by linearity, so we consider two <coughs> uh, two similar problems. So, let me write it. So, this is homogeneous wave equation and I take the initial conditions as v x 0 equal to u 0 x and v t 0 equal to u 1 x. Okay. So, let me call it phi. Okay. So, let me not repeat where is x and where is t. Okay. So, that is understood now. Okay. And another problem, now I take the <coughs> uh, Inhomogeneous equation, so W T T minus C square W X X F X T, and now sorry for that. Not used to W X zero is zero and w t x 0 6. Okay. Of course, this problem 5 we already saw, saw this and the v is given by the D'Alembert's formula. So, there is no problem with that. Okay. That is no problem. So, but we have not done this one. So, we have <coughs> by linearity, so that is an important observation. So, then the solution u of problem 4 is sum of p and w. Okay. So, linearity plays a crucial role here. <coughs> And you can easily verify that the solution u of problem 4 is given as sum of solution of problem 5 and solution of problem 6. Okay. So, problem 5 as I said, so it is already done there. So, we have the solution in the given by the D'Alembert's formula. So, what remains to do with this problem 6? So, with this reduction, it is sufficient to assume that 
the initial conditions are 0. So, that is homogeneous initial conditions only there is inhomogeneous term in the equation okay. and this is solved by the Duhamel's principle. Okay. And so, to solve 6 we convert that into uh, an initial value, initial value problem. Okay. So, that is uh, that is the idea of Duhamel's principle. Okay. So, consider now in homogeneous equation uh, homogeneous equation c square u x x equal to 0 x in r, but I take t bigger than s what is s in a minute I will tell you and now I prescribe the initial conditions at time t equal to s not 0 but at s. So, this I made remark in the beginning itself. So, we can uh, x and this you provide it by x. x in r. Okay, so, the inhomogeneous term if you look at it inhomogeneous term f appears as initial conditions for this problem. Okay. So, here s is bigger than or equal to 0 is fixed but arbitrary okay. so as we change yes so the problem changes and the capital u also changes so if capital u in principle is a function of x t and s So, by D'Alembert's formula, formula we have uh, u of x t okay. just to <coughs> uh, stress the dependence on s yes, because it also depends on s. Yes. So, we write this as s yes. okay. just that is to just indicate capital U also depends on s. Yes. Okay. So, if you again look at uh, the D'Alembert's formula the u is 0. So, this will not contribute to anything. So, only the first derivative is given and so and that is given by uh, the <coughs> integral of that initial condition and now we have to replace t by t minus s remember that. So, okay. so x minus c t minus s uh, x plus c t minus s sorry for that f of eta s d eta ok. Data. 
Okay, so we'll uh, complete the solution of problem six uh, in our next class. Okay, so we'll just just remember this one, and we'll uh, uh, continue this in the next class. Thank you.